this stand is very very heavy sign of quality isn't it wow Oh, this will give me a good workout. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Testier. I'm a tea reviewer and genuine professional calibrator. I've unboxed the Samsung Q90R 2019 4K QLED television from the South Korean brand and I'm going to go through the picture settings in the user menu to see whether the company has implemented anything new. So if I press the settings button on the remote control, this will bring up the user menu. If we go into the picture sub-menu, I've selected the most accurate out-of-the-box picture preset, which is movie mode. If we go into the expert settings sub-menu, the first control is a backlight. Now, I believe that the default factory value in movie mode is around 26, but I've had to lower this to 3 because otherwise the image on screen will look blown out due to the amount of lighting I have in my room and how I've actually set up the camera. So the backlight control actually determines the light output from the television in terms of the LED backlight. If we go down to brightness, this allows you to set the near black gamma. Now on other TVs from other brands, this control normally affects the digital black level. 
but the way Samsung has implemented this setting since probably 2017 is that this actually affects the near black gamma without actually moving the digital black point. So if we go into a brightness setting, if you actually lower it, this will just basically darken near black gamma, whereas if you actually go higher, it will brighten near black gamma. So I'll go back to zero. And if I go into the next control, this will be contrast. This sets the digital white level. If you actually go too high, you may introduce clipping to whiter than white shades or even a pink tint because you, know, you will be clipping the color channel. But I'll go to 45 for now. And then the sharpness control is basically edge enhancement. Color control affects all the colors globally. Tint control rotates all the colors and apply picture settings. You can set this to all sources or current source, which means that any adjustment you make to the picture settings will only be limited to the input in which you are making the adjustments. So I'll leave it on all sources. Digital clean view. Since 2018, this control actually consists of a decontouring filter as well, which will serve to smooth out any posterization in, let's say, compressed sources. But the way Samsung has implemented it was that it combined noise reduction with the decontouring as well, which is why I tend not to use it. I'll have to check when I review this television over the next couple of weeks whether this is still the case, that the digital clean view is a combination of both noise reduction and also the contouring filter. Auto Motion Plus settings allows you to adjust the motion compensated frame interpolation and also black frame insertion on the Samsung Q90R. The default mode in the movie picture preset is custom, which allows you to adjust the blur reduction and also jitter reduction independently of each other. The blur reduction control will work on high frame rate content, so let's say 50 hertz or 60 hertz, whereas jitter reduction will mainly target low frame rate content, for example 24 hertz or 30 hertz. LED clear motion is basically Samsung's black frame insertion. If I actually switch this on, maybe you'll be able to see some flicker on screen, but I will turn it off and I'm not entirely sure whether the camera will show the flicker because I have no one manning the camera behind me and I don't know what the footage is going to look like. But yes, LED clear motion is basically Samsung's black frame insertion. And if I go into the... All right, one thing that I need to actually point out that I've just actually noticed as well is that if you actually engage LED clear motion in the black frame insertion, you can see that you know even though it is grayed out, jitter reduction is still at 10, which means that some motion compensated frame interpolation is probably being applied as well, which I think is not really desirable. But again, I'll need to check this when I review this TV properly. I've just basically unboxed this and sat down to film this video. So let's switch off LED clear motion. And if we go into the next menu item, it is local dimming. This allows you to adjust the algorithm of the full array local dimming backlighting on the set. Obviously, this is Samsung's 4K flagship for 2019. It will have full array local dimming or FALD LED backlighting. Contrast enhancer is basically dynamic contrast control, which serves to boost the highlight and suppress the shadow detail to give you a more contrasty image. But as you can imagine from the name itself, it works dynamically and you may be losing some shadow detail and highlight detail. So I don't really advise that you use it, except probably in games. But again, you know, I'll get into that when I review the TV properly. Film mode is grayed out now because I haven't actually fed any sources to the television, but this engages the film mode interlacing on the television for interlaced broadcast content. Color tone allows you to set the white balance presets. So if you go for warm two, it is going to look redder than warm one, and then standard, and then cool will be the bluest color temperature. So I'll just go back to the default of warm two. White balance allows you to calibrate the grayscale on this television. There are two separate sub-menus here. 
two point controls and you can see that there are six settings here. R gain stands for red gain, green gain, blue gain, red offset, green offset and blue offset. The gain controls affect the brighter portion of the image and the offset controls affect the darker portion of the image. If we go back one step, there is also a 20 point control that allows you to adjust if you actually switch it on every 5% video stimulus interval in terms of the red, green and blue to make up a neutral looking D65 grey. So this will allow for more precision and granularity when you are doing your grayscale adjustment or white balance calibration. And if we get out from here, gamma is a function that determines how the input video signal should be translated to the picture on screen. And if you actually go for a higher value, it will brighten the image. If you go for a lower value, it will darken the image. And I'll leave it to zero for now. And if I RGB only mode, you can use this in conjunction with maybe a color and tint test pattern to set the color decoding on your TV correctly. But these days, professional calibrators like myself, we rely on objective measurements from meter rather than subjective means such as this color filter, even though this is a digital color filter which is more accurate than those color filter that sometimes comes in test disk. Color space settings, you can either leave it on auto, which means that the TV will be adjusting the color gamut according to the incoming info frame, or you can switch to the custom submenu where it will enable Samsung's Advanced Color Management System or CMS you can adjust the three primary colors of red, green, and blue, and the three secondary colors of yellow, cyan, and magenta. And under each color, you can adjust the red, green, and blue component. So I call this type of color management system an RGB-based color management system, which is slightly different from the HSL or hue saturation luminance color management system that many other TV manufacturers use. Reset picture, right? Don't press this button if you have had your TV calibrated. But yes, those are the settings in the picture menu. I also want to explore very quickly the general sub-menu, especially under the external device manager. Obviously, game mode settings is grayed out now because I am not feeding any video source to this television. Again, I stress that I've just basically unboxed this. So this presumably will allow you to... All oh, right, you can actually see the number of settings in there. So you can actually either engage the FreeSync 2 mode, which is a form of variable refresh rate. You can engage Game Motion Plus, which will enable some frame interpolation when you are playing games, but still keep the input lag relatively low. And Dynamic Black Equalizer, I've looked at this function when I attended Samsung's 2019 QLED launch in Porto, where this serves to elevate the near black gamma to make shadow detail clearer when you are actually playing games. Obviously, it may not be accurate to the creator's intention, but then again, if you want to win, maybe this is the method that you need to resort to to gain an advantage over any of your opponents, right? And if I go into general again, and then game enhancer, I'll need to check this out to see what it is. And then game mode, obviously, as part of the specification of ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode, TV manufacturers need to allow for ALLM to be switched on and off. Input Signal Plus is slightly interesting because I think what this is, is to allow for HDMI 2.0B because 
on previous Samsung televisions, they were using the label of HDMI UHD color for this purpose. So if you wanted to, let's say, play back high frame rate content in HDR, you will have to actually enable HDMI UHD color. And I'm not entirely sure why the company has changed the label to Input Signal Plus. Maybe it's to do with HDR10 Plus. Maybe it's to do with the possibility that there may be some other HDMI 2.1 features on this TV. Again, I'll have to actually check this out when I'm doing the review. And then HDMI Black Level, you can set it between low and high. Low is usually for video level, high for PC level. And I think that concludes my walkthrough of the picture settings on Samsung's 2019 QLED television on the flagship Q90R. I say flagship, but it is the 4K flagship rather than the 8K flagship. So the 4K flagship Samsung Q90R. I'll be spending the next couple of weeks reviewing this television. So if you have anything in particular that you want me to test, or if you have any questions about this TV at all, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube section below and I'll try to answer them, no promises. But at least if you put the questions there, you will have more of a chance of either me taking notice or me answering it. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.